We are back, Sacktown Sports with Styles and Watkins. And thank you, Kyle. We are joined by Chris Biederman of the Sacktown B and Candlestick Chronicle. What's up, Chris? How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Great. We're good. We're good. So, Chris, I'm just going to ask you straight off top because yeah. I don't know where you stand. I know, I know you do a show with my guy, Kyle Madsen. I don't know where you stand. <laughs> it's Super Bowl or bust, yes or no. It has to be for the Niners. It has to be. Yeah, I would think it has to be. I would think it has to be at this point based on how well they've played, based on the roster construction, based on how well Brock Purdy's played. He seems to be getting better um, and sort of doing everything Kyle Shanahan wants in, in a quarterback for the first time really since, since he's taken over as head coach in 2017. So, yeah, I think the way they've played and given how they look, particularly relative to the rest of the NFC, uh, they should be in that mode that, you know, it's Super Bowl or bust. And and I think if you were to ask them, you know, to a man in the locker room, I, I think that's what they would say as well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm at the point where it's Super Bowl or bust. Before the season, I was like, yeah, you can still have a good year without winning the Super Bowl. But based on how well they've played, I'm of the mind that they, they got to win it this year. Chris, now maybe I'm late to the party, but Sunday was the first time for me where it just it felt undeniable that Christian McCaffrey is the best player in the NFL. And that's even I think even including Patrick Mahomes, like just the way he's playing right now, it 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 just it feels like he's head and shoulders above everyone else. And he he's kind of launched himself into that MVP conversation. What do you think it would take for for McCaffrey to truth truly get consideration for for MVP at, at the season's end? Man, the the bar is so high for MVP when it comes to non quarterbacks, right? right? I don't I don't know all the history off the top of my head, but I think you would have to have something like twenty plus touchdowns and uh you know a thousand yards receiving and uh, in addition to obviously a thousand yards rushing at least. Um, you know he's in rare air right now. I I think you know he's he he can break Jerry Rice's all time record with with touchdowns in fourteen consecutive games if he scores one against the Cowboys. And the Niners haven't lost a regular season game since the Christian McCaffrey trade, which is pretty wild to think about. And he just sort of unlocks everything they want to do offensively, right? Like even the touchdown he scored on the pass to Brock Purdy's left in the first half of the, of the game on Sunday, you know, you know, that was like a check down option, right? And you have mm -hmm. like as good as McCaffrey is as a primary weapon, he's also probably the best check down option in the league when you know, you go through all your reads and then all of a sudden, oh, nobody's open, but I do have Christian McCaffrey matched up against a linebacker. Bam, six points. It's a, that's quite the luxury for, for a team to have that already has a slew of really talented playmakers on the outside. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you. Like he he can be in the running, but to be honest, it would probably take a down year from all the top right. quarterbacks for him to, to to win MVP. But I absolutely think like we see it all the time where the best quarterback in the league wins MVP, but then, right. uh, you know, a player like McCaffrey or running back wins offensive player of the year. Right. If he has like a 20 touchdown season and the 49ers are the number one seed, uh, I think he would have to be a lock for consideration at least and probably the betting favorite for offensive player of the year if he's not MVP. But no, if he keeps this up, he absolutely has to be in the discussion, but it is it is pretty difficult for, for non-quarterbacks to win that award. Yeah. We are talking to Chris Biederman of the Candlestick Chronicle and the Sacramento Bee. Chris, my question to you is this. Is Brock Purdy finally beating the dink and dunk allegations? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think even last year he was better than sort of what the narrative was about him. I, I think, you know, when it comes to the punditry um, and media people, a lot of people just sort of assume that Kyle Shanahan just wants a point and shoot quarterback, right? And somebody who can just run his offense. But I think if you watch him play closely, and and particularly if you if you listen to people who really know quarterback play, um, they will tell you that Brock Purdy is is it's not just a point and shoot thing with him. It's he's playing in an extremely high level, right? Like both things can be true. You can be in a great system, you can have great playmakers to to throw the ball to, but you can also play at a at a really high level within those confines, right? So I think Brock Purdy is, and all the numbers would certainly back that up. All the numbers sort of independent of his playmakers uh, would indicate that he, that he's playing at a really high level. And yeah, he benefits from being in Kyle Shanahan's offense and, and having Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey, obviously. No question about it, but he is playing at a really high level. And I think ultimately that's that's what raises a 49ers ceiling. You, you When you think about, you know, potentially 
making a long run through the playoffs. There might be a scenario where, you know, your defense isn't playing great and you need a quarterback to go get you 30 points. Well, the 49ers have scored just about 30, 30 points or more in just about every game Brock Purdy's played, right? With the exception of the Dallas playoff game last year, obviously the Eagles game, which he got hurt in uh, early on in the NFC title game. So like there's, you know, the Niners are scoring a ton of points with Brock Purdy. The offense is playing at an efficient level that we haven't seen before. Uh, and obviously Christian McCaffrey has a lot to do with that. But I think Brock Purdy deserves a lot of credit and he's playing at a really high level. And you, if you go through just all the numbers, he's basically top five in all of the efficiency metrics. And really the only the only number where he's like outside the top, the top 10 is just overall yardage. Um, but, you know, you look at pass attempts and and just all the efficiency numbers. I don't want to go through them and, and bore your listeners with that, with that, but he's, he's playing like a legitimate top 10 quarterback. I'm not saying he necessarily is um, because there might be a talent gap between him and some of the other guys, but in terms of playing the position and what you want your quarterback to do, Brock Purdy's playing at a super high level right now. Chris, when you look at some of the numbers for, for Nick Bosa, I mean, if you just look at his sack total, it, it looks like he's off to a slow start after signing his contract. But if you look at some of the advanced numbers, like, you know, pressures and, and win rate and stuff like that, it says almost the complete opposite. Where, where do you feel like, or, or which numbers do you feel like better represent uh, the season that he's having right now? Yeah, I think the overall pressures is is a pretty good barometer. And and it looked like I thought on Sunday against Arizona that that was the closest thing to defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa, we've seen so far this year. I think, you know, if you were to talk to him and ask him about the first three weeks of the season, it, it, there was an element of rust, an element of getting into football shape, right? And you have two games right. after missing the entirety of training camp and not getting any of those reps and being in Florida and just working on pass rushing drills is obviously dramatically different than going against Trent Williams for 15 plays an afternoon in practice, right? So he was still knocking some rust off, getting into football shape. And then, you know, third game of the season, you have a short turnaround on a Thursday. It would be pretty difficult to, to you know, recover in time and, and optimize yourself for that game. But with the extended time off ahead of Thursday, uh, Sunday's game against Arizona, you know, Nick Bosa was a real menace in that game. And and that's what the 49ers expect. That's what he was last year. And as long as he stays healthy, I would fully expect him to continue to build on that and get better and better as the season goes on, because that's just the type of player he is. And I think he's finally rounding into shape. But in terms of like the numbers you look for, yeah, pressure is absolutely there's an element of luck when it comes to sacks. Um, not all sacks are created equal. Obviously, there, there are coverage elements to it. You know, Drake Jackson had three sacks in the in the season opener. And at least two of them were looked like coverage sacks or Kenny Pickett just not getting rid of the ball. Right. So sacks can be a little bit misleading, but I think, you know, when it comes to down in and down out, Nick Bosa is still impacting the game at a really high level, whether the sack numbers are there or not. We are talking to Chris Beerman, Candlestick Chronicle and the Sacramento Bee. Chris, you were also at Kings Media Day. Let's switch gears here a little bit. What was your biggest takeaway from Kings Media Day? Yeah, Monty McNair said it. Uh, with, he was the first availability we had in, in the scrums. And, and he said, you know, the words we want to ascend to, you know, quote unquote, championship contention. And De'Aaron Fox echoed that later, said our goal is ultimately win a championship. And, you know, I've, I've only been living in Sacramento for a few years now, but I feel pretty comfortable saying that championship aspirations are not something typical of King's Media Day. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that's that's a, a pretty substantial takeaway for me. And just, you know, hearing Mike Brown talk about the difficulty in going from good to great, his, his point, and he even said it a lot last year was that, you know, it's, it's easy to e easier to go from bad to good than it is from good to great. And for the Kings to go from a team that was a three seed and exited in the first round against the Warriors to championship contention, um, they're going to have to go from good to great. And, and for De'Aaron Fox, you know, I asked him, like, what's what's that look like for you in terms of you taking the next step and going from, you know, an all NBA type player to like a real MVP candidate? And his thing was consistency. Like he needs to do it every day. And that's what greatness is, is being able to do it every day, um, because I think that's been a, a fair criticism of De'Aaron Fox. Even last year, there were, you know, like there were moments where it just felt like, yeah, De'Aaron Fox on a Tuesday against you know, some no name team is is probably not playing at the level that you need him to play um, and not even last year, maybe going back further than that. But his and Mike Brown said it at the end of the season last year, too. The next step for Fox is is playing at a championship level or bringing that championship mentality day in and day out, whether it's practice, shoot around a game on a Tuesday in December 
right? So that's that's going to be the difference. Like, can the Kings lift their standard? You remember how many disappointing losses they had at home to sort of subpar teams last year, or teams they, they definitely should have beaten. And that was sort of a, an underlying theme last year, too. Like, if they can avoid that, and, and raise their caliber, raise their level of intensity and, and what their standard is, um, they're going to they're gonna be in that championship mix. I think they're talented enough. They added some depth this offseason. If they stay healthy like they did last year, and if De'Aaron Fox ascends and Demonis Sabonis learns from the Warriors series, all these things would point to them being a better team this year. But obviously, every season's different. You know, not the, the progress is not always a straight line. So it's going to be really difficult. They're not going to sneak up on anybody this year. But the main takeaway is, is the Kings overall are raising that standard. Like, yeah, they wanted to break through and get to the playoffs last year. That was their main goal. But now their goals are much higher and they want to get to championship contention. And it's going to be really difficult because the West is really crowded and really good. But that's why we love the NBA. Thanks for that. That was Chris Biederman. Chris, uh, we know we can find you, the C Candlestick Chronicles and also the Sacramento Bee. Thank you for the work that you do. And next time you see my guy, Kyle Tell him Alan says what's up. <laughs> I will. I'll tell him what's up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you, Chris. Thanks so much. That was Chris Biederman, Candlestick Chronicle, and Sacramento B. We got to get to a break. Siles and Watkins, when we get back, you know, we've been real positive here. But Very. I'm starting to feel good a little bit. I'm okay. starting to show more, more yeah. of my personality. And I'm coming at the Brock stars. Uh -oh. I got something to say about Brock Purdy fans that I should be calling you Niner fans, but I'm purposely calling you Brock stars, Brock Purdy fans for a reason. That's all that and more when we get back. Siles and Watkins, Sack Sports.